determine the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. That means I want to be able to find the formula that I can be able to find any value um, in this arithmetic sequence. And the only information I'm given is the fourth term and the thirteenth term. Now, we can uh, easily probably, you know, just maybe use some uh, induction and just try to figure out, you know, what exactly the difference is or what we need to do to um, find what is the difference between, you know, these two terms um, just by kind of looking at it. But I want to use the formula so we can always use it because even if we have some larger numbers, we need to make sure we can follow the same process. So our general formula that we have for our arithmetic sequence, we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. However, in this case, we're not given um, a sub n or a sub 1, we're given a sub 13 and a sub 4. So I'm going to now plug in those values into this equation, therefore, so I can find d because we need to make sure we can find the difference when we're talking about arithmetic sequences. So rather than a sub n, I'm going to use a sub 13 equals, instead of a sub 1, I'm going to say a sub 4 plus, now, instead of n, we use 13, and instead of 1, we use 4. So this is going to be 13 minus 4 times d. Now, a sub 13, we said, was 65. a sub 4, we say, is 20. Plus, 13 minus 4 is 9d. Now, what I can simply do is solve for d. So I subtract 20, and therefore I get 45 equals 9d. Divide by 9, divide by 9. That's a d. And we can say d equals 5. So now I know the common difference, right? However, there's a little bit of a problem because to write this formula, if I want to find the formula, it needs to be a sub n equals a sub 1. So I need to figure out what is my a sub 1. Now, we can do this exact same process again. Um, this time, now that we know d, we can say, all right, I need to figure out, uh, let's say I know a sub 4. So I know a sub 4, which would be uh, 20. So I could say 20 equals, I do not know what a sub 1 is, plus um, 4 minus 1 times my difference, which is 5, right? And you could say 20 equals a sub 1 um, plus 3 times 5. 20 equals a sub 1 plus 15 minus 15. And you could say a sub 1 equals 5, right? So you can follow that process. You can do the same thing for the 13th term. Instead of using the 13th term, or use 65 here and 13 over there. However, um, we can also just kind of look at this and to say, all right, well, if I know a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, well, if a sub 4 is 20, and I know the difference is 5, then a sub 3 has to be 15, a sub 2 has to be 10, and a sub 1 equals 5. So you can really kind of work on it either way. But the main important thing, though, is now we know what a sub 1 is, and we want to find the equation for any value of a sub n. So it's going to be plus n minus 1, and then now our difference now is d. Well, now we know what d is and we know what a sub 1 is. So let me write this in a different color so we can distinguish it. So our equation for the nth term of this arithmetic sequence is going to be a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 5, plus n minus 1 times 5. Then I can apply my distributive property. And I'd have a sub n equals 5 plus 5n minus 5. Well, the 5 and the negative 5 are going to cancel out, so my final or so add up to 0. So I'll have a sub n equals 5n is my final uh, rule for my nth term sequence.